Hey everyone, Dave here with another Blu-ray DVD collection update video. This is the second one for the months of October, November 2022. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the latest releases sent over to me from kicks.com.au, as well as a small selection of personal pickups that I've got for myself over the last month or so. There's quite a bit to take a look at here, so let's get into it. So as I said at the top of this one, uh, towards the end of the video, we're going to be taking a look at a small selection of personal pickups that I've got for myself online or in stores over the last month or so. But firstly, we're going to be taking a look at the new releases sent over to me from kicks.com.au. I also want to highlight Kicks' latest campaign, which is running from the 21st of October to the 22nd of December, which is of course Kicksmas. With Christmas fast approaching, Kix has gifting and entertainment for the whole family sorted with a whole range of deals. But that is not all. Every tanned shopper gets a free gift from Kix, which is really exciting. Of course, that is running right now. Head over to kix.com.au and check out that sale and see if you can pick up yourself some bargains. But for now, let's take a look at the latest releases that have just been sent in to me. Firstly, we'll take a look at a couple of brand new releases on Blu-ray, starting off with Where the Crawdads Sing. Where the Crawdads Sing tells the story of Kaya, an abandoned girl who raised herself to adulthood in dangerous marshlands of North Carolina. Drawn to two young men from town, Kaya opens herself to a new and startling world, but when one of them is found dead, she's immediately cast by the community as the main suspect. As the case unfolds, the verdict as to what actually happened becomes increasingly unclear, threatening to reveal the many secrets that lay within the marsh. Now, this movie had a little bit of a kind of, a, I guess, a mixed reception when it opened. These movies that are based on YA novels always do because they are very sappy. They're a little bit melodramery. They're not movies that everyone absolutely loves. I usually tend to like these movies. I think they're, uh, they're enjoyable. They're kind of harmless entertainment. You don't have to think too much about them. This one also has the added bonus of featuring a lead performance from Daisy Edgar Jones, who I have come to really, really like recently. The first thing I ever saw her in was Fresh. That Disney Plus Hulu original movie with her and Sebastian Stan, he plays the cannibal. I thought it was just such a great movie, her performance, and it was great. And then I, after watching that, I checked out Normal People, which is a terrific miniseries starring her from a few years ago. Adored that. And uh, now seeing her in this movie here delivers another really, really good performance. For me personally, I think maybe she is what made this movie really so enjoyable because I do like her performance. And she is by far and away the best thing about this movie. Because again, it is sappy. It is very, very predictable. This is not anything you haven't seen before um, but it is an enjoyable enjoyable movie the transfer on this one is really great it is kind of hard to you know muck up the transfer on a new movie that's been shot on digital and has you know been probably had a, a 4k digital intermediate and all of that it's very hard it does happen but it is hard so this one does look really nice there is no 4k release of this one unfortunately i think it would come up looking very very good on 4k but i think all it does need is hd it's nothing spectacular it's not an incredibly colorful movie it's a very soft looking movie in fact very soft lighting very soft colors it is set in the marshes so there's a lot of browns a lot of greens a lot of kind of natural earth colors but yeah I definitely recommend checking this movie out because I thought it was quite enjoyable. Next up we'll take a look at The Black Phones. Oscar nominee Ethan Hawke in the most disturbing role of his career stars in a new psychological thriller from Blumhouse and the director who brought you Sinister and Doctor Strange Scott Derrickson. Finney Shaw, a shy but clever 13-year-old boy, is abducted by a sadistic killer, played by Ethan Hawke, and trapped in a soundproof basement where screaming is of little use. When a disconnected phone on the wall begins to ring, Finney discovers that he can hear the voices of the killer's previous victims, and they are dead set on making sure that what happened to them doesn't happen to Finney. Now, The Black Phone is another one of these kind of flavor of the month vintage horror movies. There have been so many of these coming out, I guess, in the last decade or so. We think of movies like The Conjuring and It, and more recently, X, uh, Pearl, of course, Stranger Things probably did a very big part in kicking off this whole kind of craze. Uh, but there have been so many of these movies that feel like they've got like the, that classic vintage horror aesthetic, 60s, 70s kind of horror. Black Phone, I think, actually does this really quite well. It kind of puts itself across. It's not only set in the 1970s, but it kind of adapts the aesthetics of the horror films of the era. I think it does it very, very, very well. But this is a movie that did open to kind of mixed middling reception when it opened. And I feel like I'm one that's kind of on the kind of lower end of the scale. I didn't really love this movie. I think I liked it. I didn't absolutely love it. I thought it was a little bit dull. 
I thought it was a bit average. I thought there wasn't many... I wasn't much suspense in here. There wasn't a lot of thrills. There was maybe a jump scare. Uh, it, it wasn't anything that felt particularly all that original. I'm not really being a huge fan of horror stuff until recently. But these are the kind of horror movies that I usually do like. They're kind of the more kind of less gruesome, more psychological kind of mo movies. Um, I just didn't, I didn't love this. I didn't feel that kind of, uh, you know, fear or tension or anything like that. I must say the performances in here are great. All the child actors in the movie are terrific. Uh, Ethan Hawke delivers a really, really menacing performance here. It definitely is worth seeing this for Ethan Hawke's performance because the performances in here are just the best thing about this movie. Unfortunately, it is really quite dull. I have checked it out again on Blu-ray. Uh, the transfer here is very, very nice. Again, it has that 70s aesthetic, so it was shot digitally. There are some sections of it that were shot using Super 8 film, but m for the most part, it was shot digitally. It has been given, I guess, what is kind of like an artificial film grain to it, which does look nice. There were really, I had no issues with this. I think it, it pulls up looking very, very good. Uh, it does look like, again, the aesthetics of this, the 70s aesthetics just look so natural, look so um, so organic. I, I think this pulls that off very, very well. So it does translate to the, the transfer of this one on Blu-ray. Again, no 4K of this. I think it would have looked very nice on 4K, but because I wasn't a huge fan of the movie, I think a Blu-ray uh, Blu release of this will uh, suffice for now. Uh, but if you do want to check this one out, I would say check it out. Be tripping it's just, just know that there's a little bit of kind of mixed reception there. I didn't love it, but I know a lot of other people did really love it. So if you're a horror fan, if you're an Ethan Hawke fan, definitely, definitely check it out. But don't expect too much from this one. Next up, we have got a brand new 4K release, Fatal Attraction. Stylish and sexy, Fatal Attraction took audiences to terrifying new heights with its thrilling story of a casual encounter gone terribly awry. A married man's one night stand comes back to haunt him when that lover begins to stalk him and his family. This one only comes with a 4K disc as opposed to a 4K and Blu-ray collection. I do love that Paramount are really into just releasing these reissues with a single 4K disc because it keeps the price down, particularly as these are movies that so many of us already own on a previous format. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of thrillers, particularly thrillers from like the 1980s to 1990s. I'm a huge fan of Michael Douglas. I think his movies from the 80s, late 80s, just so, so good. And Fatal Attraction is absolutely one of the best. Uh, this is one of my favorites up there with uh, Basic Instinct and Falling Down, the game. I think this movie is so good. Uh, Michael Douglas's performance in this is terrific, as is Glenn Close. Glenn Close delivers this insanely manic performance, and it's one of the greatest ever put on cinema. Now, this new 4K transfer of Fatal Attraction uses the same transfer that was used on the remastered edition of the movie that came out in 2020, two years ago. Um, that version of the movie, that master of the film, was never released on Blu-ray in Australia. The only releases we had in Australia were one from 2012, which is really quite a poor, tra really quite a poor transfer of the movie, which is based on an older DVD era transfer of the film. And then I think Shock released it under the Cinema Cult uh, label in 2019. So that also literally just missed out on the new transfer transfer the new remaster of the film. So this one right here, the 4K edition, finally gets the new remastered version of the movie on to physical media in Australia and I'm so happy because this does look really great. I mean it's not the, the greatest remaster ever. This is not particularly the best looking movie ever. I don't think a terrific transfer could have ever been taken out of this. It's not very colourful. It's not even, it doesn't even have really great shadow tones or, you know, great balance, colour balance or anything like that. It's almost a kind of washed out looking movie. It's also very, very filmic. It has a very heavy grain field here, but the 4K does make a lot of this look very, very natural. Now, from what I understand, there's not a huge difference between this new 4K release and the remastered Blu-ray from 2020. So if you do have that, this might be something that you skip again if you are either overseas and you picked it up overseas or you've imported it into Australia this is something that you probably isn't that necessary to then upgrade to again but if you like me own that original 2012 issue of this movie or like the cin cinema cult the uh, shock reissue from 2019 this is an absolute must upgrade if you're a fan of the movie because it's the best I personally have ever seen this movie ever looking at. If you love this movie I definitely suggest 
upgrading it. Uh, but if you are coming to this movie for the very first time, I certainly recommend it. Particularly over the other Blu-ray that is available on the Australian market, this is the one to pick up. Next up, we have got season four of Yellowstone. Who shot John Dutton? That's the burning question that left fans reeling in the explosive season three finale. Following the brutal attacks on the Dutton family, and with their fates unknown, Rip and the other Wranglers wield their own brand of justice to take revenge and defend the Dutton legacy. This season comes as a four disc set, which includes all 10 hour long episodes of the Emmy nominated series. Again, if you've been watching these videos, you'll know that I am a huge fan of Yellowstone. I absolutely love this series. In fact, this is probably my favorite television series on TV right now next to Succession, which is also a terrific show. But Yellowstone is just so fun. I love Westerns, whether it be Westerns set in the past, Westerns set in, you know, the modern day. I just love it all. I love the gritty aesthetics of the Western. I love the themes of revenge and greed and family and all these kinds of things. And it's all right here in Yellowstone. Kevin Costner delivers a terrific performance in this series. This is quite possibly his best role ever. And he is just so good in this show. Season four is the best of the bunch so far. It is explosive. It's revelatory. Story. There's so many twists and turns, really great action sequences, and it just really dives deep into the legacy of the Dutton family. And uh, again, without spoiling too much, if you haven't seen any of this show, it is just the biggest and the best season of the bunch. If you are sitting on the fence about watching even like starting this show, I say you gotta jump right into this because it is just such a good show. I haven't yet had a chance to check out the prequel series, which is 1886 or 16, six, uh, whatever it is. Um, I haven't had a chance to check that one out just yet, but Kix did send that over to me a couple of months ago, and I'm very excited to check that one out. As always, the transfer on this disc right here is terrific. Again, it's a modern television show shot digitally, and it just looks beautiful. Like all of Taylor Sheridan's work, it feels so filmic and it just deserves to be seen in the best format and on the biggest screen you possibly, possibly can. Definitely, this is highly recommended. I'm so excited to get into this all over again because I just adore this show. And we've got one final title here from Kix, which is a DVD of Ray Donovan the Movie. Ray Donovan the movie picks up where season 7 left off, with Mickey in the wind and Ray determined to find and stop him before he can cause any more carnage. The film also weaves together the present day fallout from the Donovan-Sullivan feud with Ray and Mickey's origin story from 30 years ago. This comes in a standard DVD Amaray case with a single disc. Okay, so next to Yellowstone and Succession, Ray Donovan is one of my favourite shows of the last, I guess, decade. It's a show I came to pretty late. I only came to it maybe three years ago and binge-watched like the first, I think, maybe five seasons and then had to wait a couple of years for the next two seasons to come along. But I just think this show's so great. Liev Schreiber is terrific in this as is the entire supporting cast, including John Voight. They all deliver just really great, crazy manic performances. This is a crazy family of gangsters who will do anything to get their way. It unfortunately got axed after season seven and they didn't really get a chance to wrap up the show, but they were allowed to come back and do a movie to kind of wrap up all the uh, open plot threads that were left after season seven, which is really great. And the movie I think is a really, really good way to uh, to cap it all off and just put a little end on it. I mean, the, the fans deserved it. Again, I'm not going to say I was there right from the beginning, but particularly the fans who were there right from the beginning really deserve to have this show, you know, closed out properly because it's one of those shows that is just, you know, one of the greatest of all time, in my personal opinion. Unfortunately, this is the only way it's available uh, in Australia. In fact, they only ever released the first three seasons on Blu-ray in Australia, and then the rest were DVD only. Um, so now the movie is DVD only. Same in America, actually. Only the first three seasons were available on Blu-ray. However... Over in America, they have made the movie available not only on Blu-ray, but 4K as well, which is madness. Uh, but unfortunately, yes, we only did get the DVD edition here in Australia. 
that's perfectly fine for me. I'm happy to just own it in some format and have it get it into my Ray Donovan collection. And at that, that is all the titles that I have got from Kicks. Once again, thanks to the incredible team over there for sending in over all of these discs here. And don't forget, they also have their Kicksmas sales going on at the moment. All those sales that I read out earlier, you can go and you get a bunch of really great deals and a bunch of stuff. And again, every 10th order gets a free Christmas gift. There's some great stuff there. And with that, we're now going to take a look at a bunch of personal pickups that I've grabbed for myself over the last month or so from online sales or in-store sales. First, then we're going to take a look at a bunch of titles that I picked up from JB Hi-Fi's clearance sale. They've got this clearance sale on at the moment where they've got Blu-rays from as little as like $1.20 up to like $4 or $5. Uh, they also had a 20% off sale a couple of weeks ago, which meant that you could stack that on top of the clearance sale and some of these movies were just absolutely dirt cheap. I found a couple that I just never really picked up along the way for whatever reason. They were all like $4 each and I thought why not. I also got a couple of 4k discs in here for about $12 each too that I just again had never picked up along the way either. So let's take a look at what we picked up from the JB Hi-Fi clearance plus 20% off sale. First up, we've got What Men Want, starring Taraji P. Henson and Tracy Morgan. Again, don't really know too much about this one. It got really, really trashy ratings when it first came out. But, you know, any movie that has a female lead in it these days tends to get review bombed online. So I'm not sure if it's a case of that or whether it's a case of this just genuinely being a, not a very good movie. But I do remember liking the original What Women Want from the 1990s. And I'm kind of keen to see this new kind of, I guess, gender bent version of that movie. Also picked up one called 24 Hours to Live starring Ethan Hawke. Again, really don't know anything about this. It does have pretty average reviews. But I do love Ethan Hawke and I do love a brainless, dumb action flick every now and then, you know, on a Sunday afternoon or something like that when you've got nothing better to do, you chuck, chuck on one of these really crappy action movies. This is one that I'm actually really excited to check out. We picked up one called The Eagle. Really don't know a lot about this, but it actually does have pretty decent reviews. It's got Channing Tatum and Jamie Bell in it. It's a movie from 2011, so quite a while ago. But I do love these like epic, biblical, historical, war kind of films. They're always a lot of fun. So I definitely want to check this one out. On that same kind of path, we have got the 2016 remake of Ben-Hur. This one doesn't really star anyone that I know other than Morgan Freeman and Marwan Kenzari. I'm kind of interested in taking a look at this. Again, this is one that has had really, really, really poor ratings across pretty much every site you can imagine. And I mean, how do you top the original one with Charlton Heston? I say original one, but you know, there was a silent version before that. And both of those two movies are just so epic and grandiose in scale that you can never top them. I'm just kind of interested though to see how they have done this story in the modern day. As far as the 4Ks go, I finally picked up the third Bad Boys movie, Bad Boys for Life. I really enjoyed this movie when I saw it in cinemas. I thought it was easily the best out of the three films. It's got a really great heartfelt story, great action, and the two leads are just terrific fun in this movie. And uh, I've got the other two on 4K. I picked them up when the third one actually came out in cinemas. So I can't wait to check out the third one in 4K when I do get a chance. And again, of course, get it into that collection. Also picked up Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure in 4K. This is part of the Studio Canal Classics Remastered range. This is one of my favorite comedies of all time. I think Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter are just so great in this. It's so funny, it's so exciting, it's so excellent uh, that I just had to pick it up in 4K again for only $12. I do have the original Blu-ray of this from America. Apparently the new remaster on this is really, really great though. You know, it's a Studio Canal release. It's got to be. Other than that, we've only picked up one other title over this month. You guys know that I absolutely love my Warner Archive collection, and I have told you before, if you want to check out the latest deals on the Warner Archive collection, you just got to go to amazon.com.au, and you type in Warner Archive Blu-ray, and then down the left-hand side, you tick Today's Deals, and then all of the ones that are currently on special on the Amazon Global Store will come up. Sometimes these are as little as like $11, 
sometimes they go up to about $20, $22, which I think is a really great price for these because usually they're like $30, $40, $50 on the global store. So whenever I see one that's like down to around $20, $15, $20, I'm gonna grab one. This time around, I picked up Children of the Damned. This is the 1964 sequel to, or semi-sequel to Village of the Damned, which came out only a few years earlier. And um, I haven't seen either of these two movies, but I've heard great things about them over the years. So I'm really excited to check them both out. I picked up Village of the Damned as part of, I think, the HMV Premium Collection not that long ago. So now I've got them both, I'm gonna check them out. This one only sent me back $11. I thought this was an absolute bargain. Probably the cheapest I've ever got a Warner Archive Collection disc for. And with that, that is everything that we're gonna be covering in this video right here. I will, I'm sure, have a couple more videos up this month. There's the latest wave of imprints coming into me soon and also the latest releases from Umbrella Entertainment. They haven't arrived just yet, uh, but when they do, I will go through them all and watch them and do my reviews and get them up. So I actually might be a little bit delayed. These might not go up for a couple of weeks. It depends on when, when I get these in my hands, but the time that I'm filming this, I don't have them in my hands. But I will be getting those videos out to you as soon as I possibly can, as always. Thanks again to kicks.com.au for sending in the most recent wave or batch of titles that I spotlit in this video right here. And thanks everybody out there for watching. I will, of course, see you on the next one. But until then, take it easy.